So I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the lighting or if it's the camera angle, but my forehead looks gigantic right now. And I just wanted to take the moment to tell you, I promise that my forehead is not that big in real life. So I do apologize, but I promise it's not normally that giant, but this is what I'm working with. So anyways, but hi, hello, how are you? Welcome to my channel. Please disregard the giant forehead and let's get into it. I have a giant library haul. I've got some books for me and some books for Grayson, but this is our library haul. They weren't all intentional. I have a problem and I know I'm not going to be able to read these all in two weeks. So I just, I can't help myself because I just feel like, um, well, if I limit myself, what if I don't like that book? Then I could have gotten more books and actually enjoyed the book or how, how do I know what kind of mood that I will be in? So no worries. I will just get them all and have a good, grand, wonderful time putting pressure on myself to try to read as many as I can. Did he break his chair? Sorry, focusing. To read as many as I can. And then I just go over and I browse the new book section and end up getting more than I should and just get whatever sounds familiar, catches my eye, who knows. Who knows, I should probably just tell myself to stop doing that, but is that gonna happen? Not at all, mm -mm, it won't. But here we are. The first book that I got is Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. Do I know what this book is about? Absolutely not. Did I hear a lot about it? Yes. Is that what prompted me to check it out? Absolutely. But I figured it's probably a safe bet to get it because I do remember, I think, seeing this as one of the book of the month options. I feel like that alone means it's probably a good book. I've never read anything from her. The main character, Sadie, is at some sort of award ceremony um, accepting an award for some major accomplishment she receives. And the next thing that she knows is she's diagnosed with some sort of medical medical condition and she's not sure if it's temporary or not but um it's called face blindness where basically she can see just fine but whenever she like tries to focus on a face it's kind of just she can't make out details it's kind of just a mess like her brain's not interpreting the face and so it just looks like um a jumble of features and she can't really recognize any face and she ends up not falling in love with just one guy but two guys and her mess is uh, her life is a mess right now she's trying to figure out her medical condition her family life maybe and so it's just not a good time for her and you gotta love a good love triangle I love that I love when I only like it when it's done well when both love options you you are torn between both love options I don't like it when the author clearly wants you to root for it's it's clear which one the author wants you to root for so then they make the other one pale in comparison so I don't really like that but I'm rambling anyways so that's all I know about this book so that one again was Catherine I mean Hello Stranger by Catherine Center by the time that this video goes up I'll definitely already have the previous video up but I did a fall TBR video and I was just saying how now that it's fall season I was really wanting to read some some fantasy or thriller or suspense books to kind of put me in that fall vibe and when I did that video I was still on hold for this one it hadn't come in yet so one that I meant to add to that fall TBR is The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. I'm probably the only person that hasn't read this book yet. I'm not too sure about what it's about, but this woman cleans this house for this family and she sees that 
the wife of the family, she, the housemaid, doesn't think she's a very good person. She's kind of horrible to her children and her husband. And so she sees that and sees how she mistreats her and just thinks about how lucky that woman is and how she would love to be her even if it was for just one day and live her life. And then one day she's trying on the, the wife's beautiful dress. She catches her and then somehow she ends up getting locked into the attic. Well, I think she lives in the attic. Yeah. And she lives in the attic and then she ends up getting locked in the attic because it's locked from the outside. The family is about to find out who she actually is and what she's capable of. And that's all I know about that one. And the next one I have is The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. And I am so intrigued by this cover. From the moment that I saw it in a bookstore, I was sucked in right away by that cover and knew that I wanted to read this book. And then it just happened to be on the new books section at the library. So I, of course, had to get it had to get it. I really don't know anything about this one either, except for that the cover is stunning. And that's all it takes for me. It's about our main character that is this notorious pirate. And she has retired from that life and wanted to retire to a peaceful family life. And once she does that, she is tracked down by an old crewmate's mother who is offering her a really handsome reward to track, to find one, the old crewmate's daughter that has been kidnapped. She thinks that this is the chance of a lifetime that she gets to have one more adventure, get her old crew back together, and even maybe become a hero, kind of make make a legend of herself and get a really good payday while she's doing it. And then of course, saving an old friend's daughter as well. But then when she gets into the adventure, it seems like things, um, then she quickly learns that things aren't what they seem and she doesn't know everything that's going on with the disappearance of the daughter and just kind of her finding out exactly what is at stake, I think is kind of what it's about. That's what I got from it. And she's, she's a chunky one. So it's actually for only 470 pages, but for some reason she just looks massive to me. Maybe the other ones are just that much shorter. But so there's that one. The next one I got was the BFG by Roald Dahl. I, I always say his name wrong. Roald Dahl? Ro, Roald. 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 Roald Dahl? I think that's right probably wrong, but I've actually never read the BFG. So when I saw it at the library, I had to get it because you just can't go on living life without having read this book. In fact, I think the only one of his that I've ever read is Matilda. So I'm on a mission to fix that. I'm going to read all of his books someday, but I'm starting with this one now. Well, not starting since I've read Matilda, but you know what I mean? Like I'm making up for the ones that I haven't read starting with the BFG. All right, so I recently read In Five Years. I read that earlier this year. I might be wrong about that, but I believe that's what it's called. And I really liked that book. And then now I just read The Seven Year Slip. Absolutely loved it. 100% a five-star read for me. It might be my favorite book of the year so far. So then I was at the library today and I saw Cassandra in Reverse was in the new book section. It made me kind of think, although with the other two, there wasn't any control in it, but this book kind of made me think of those two. And since I liked those two so much, I definitely wanted to give this one a try to see if I really like this one too. It's about our main character. She's going through a struggle. She just lost, she just got fired. Her boyfriend just broke up with her and then something else happened to her as well. Oh, <laughs> her local cafe ran out of banana bun, um, banana muffins, but she, she's a creature of habit and she wants her life really predictable. So she's very routine. She's got her life laid out so that she knows exactly what to expect, goes through the same routine. Everything is, you know, comfortable for her. And then she ends up getting fired and getting broken up with, I think the same day. And then she ends up discovering that she can go back in time. So she's, gonna go back in time to fix everything because 
of course that's gonna work out exactly how she plans, right? There's no way that that's gonna end up messy. It sounded really interesting to me because again, I really liked those other two books. So maybe I'm just really into, I don't know what I'm into, but we're gonna find out. But it sounds good, so that's that one. The next one I have is This Bird Has Flown by Susanna Hoffs. And I don't really know anything about this, but I was really into, again, the cover. I don't know, very simplistic cover, but for me, it does it. I really like the cover. I don't know why. I just really like that cover, so it did it for me. Okay, so it's about a woman in her early 30s who has hit rock bottom. She's broke. She's living out of some garbage bags with her parents, but 10 years ago, she had this really big hit song, and that was it. Here we are. She's no longer successful. The most that she's doing singing-wise now is hitting up karaoke hitting up karaoke bars in Las Vegas. And then she gets a call from her manager that she needs her in London to record a new album. And then on her flight there, she ends up sitting next to this guy, this um, literature professor, I think it is. And then so it's just her story of, can she redeem her singing career? Where's it gonna go with this professor? Um, can she let herself fall in love with him? It sounds good. So the cover is what caught my eye and then the story sounded like it'd be cute and fun too. So we shall see. And then Not That Kind of Love, no, Not That Kind of Ever After by Lucy Adams. I never heard of it. Don't know anything about it. I only picked it up because I am a sucker. Can't even explain it. I don't know why I am this way. I just know that it's true and something about it just captures my soul right away and I have to have it. But um, whenever I see books on a cover, I, I can't even explain it. This could end up being terrible, but they put books on a cover. So I have to get it. I either have to own it or I have to read it, one of the two. And so since it was at the library, I checked it out. But let's see what it's about. Our main character, Bella, whose life is not at all going according to plan. She always dreamed that she would be an author and said she's, at a, she's a receptionist. Her parents are going through a divorce. She's still single. And now her best friend is moving out to get married to some guy that she doesn't really care for. And then her her best friend's brother tells her that and um, the problem with her and why she is single is because she's looking for the one instead of just looking to have some fun. So then she kind of takes on this new outlook of life and is more about enjoying herself and having fun along the way instead of being caught up in what she and instead of being caught up in the life that she has versus the life that she wants to just enjoy herself. So then she ends up going on this app and posting a story of like some sort of retelling story, but instead with like a disastrous one night stand and she goes viral. And then instead of like just being able to enjoy that, then she all start, she starts to down spiral because her and her best friend are now fighting. She doesn't like her new roommates. And now she's putting all this pressure on herself to come up with the next big story to stay relevant, to stay viral. Now she's kind of set on a mission to not just be able to find the next story to write, but to actually start living her life to find her own fantasy, romance, romanticy, happily ever after. There we go. So that one sounds cute to me. Even if it's not, I regret nothing because it has books on the cover. So there we have it. That is all of the books from my library haul. The rest of the books I have are actually Grayson's library book haul. And I tried to just get him some, some Halloween books. In fact, I didn't make a video of my last library haul, but all the books we got the last time were of his were really good. They were all super cute and I really enjoyed them. Most importantly, he enjoyed them as well. But so I got him pumpkin heads. Don't know at all what it's about, but it's Halloween themed, so we got it. It looks like it has great art. Looks like it has some great artwork, so that's all that I needed for that. 
Then we have Scaredy Cat Spider by Rob Scotton. That one looks adorable as well. So I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Then I got, and then comes Halloween by Tom Brenner. That one looks super cute too. And then Grayson picked a book. It's banana. He's, he's in love with bananas right now. So that's that one. This one's just a random one. Sylvia Rose and the cherry tree. I thought it looked pretty. I really liked the artwork in this one too. Then we got Pumpkin Hill by Elizabeth Spur. And When You Are Happy by Eileen Spinelli. And that is it for Grayson's books. And that is it for my library haul. I hope that you are having a wonderful reading day, week, month, all of the above, and even and checking out great books at your library if you have a library near you. But thanks so much for watching.